Hi guys, so today we've actually done a very, very cool upgrade for the 770 Quilters Edition using the Upgrade Plus kit. Um, this is a purchasable kit that you can get from the Classic Quilts website. I highly recommend if you are a Bernina user based out of UAE, Kuwait, Bahrain and Oman to get this from us or wherever you are in the world. Find your nearest dealer and pick it up if you've got a 7 series machine with you because you honestly will enjoy the benefits that this upgrade is going to bring with you. This tutorial up ahead shows you how to update your software, how to upgrade your machine and we also show you the upgraded features on the machine afterwards both on the sewing side and on the embroidery side. So we really hope that you learn a lot in the course of this tutorial and if you of course have any comments questions queries definitely drop it down below and we're very happy to answer them for you don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're growing our online family and we would love to have you as part of it and finally we talk about this in the video but we're going to talk about it one more time over here is if you have not become a part of the all friends sewing hub ask us how and join our online sewing community where things are a little bit more exclusive the class is a lot more detailed and the education in the community is so much fun i hope you enjoy this video guys Hi guys, this is Aish and the cameras have turned because today Bronwyn is filming me <laughs> and I just think it's going to be fun for her to see what it is, is what it is to be on the other side of the camera. Uh, but we're doing something very nice today and I felt that because Bronwyn is doing this for her 770 and there are a lot of people out there who possibly have a Bernina 770, not the new one. The new one is called the 770 QE Plus. So if your machine does not say plus at the end, um, but it starts with 770. It also works for 765 and any of the special edition 770 machines that you might have. So that's the golden anniversary one. It could be the Peacock. Um, if you have any of these models, there is a really nice upgrade that Bernina has launched that's now available in our store. So for all our GCC clients, our Kuwait, uh, Bahrain, UAE, Oman customers if you've got 770 and you're looking to sort of upgrade it to get some really enhanced stitching and embroidery features this product is available and today's video is going to cover how you can actually go through the whole upgrading process and we're going to also try to show you a little bit of before and after so that you can really see whether this investment is worth your spend um, if you're looking into getting really you know good with the embroidery sort of work on the machine I think this upgrade kind of really levels up the 770. So if you already have an embroidery module for your 770, I think you should totally get the upgrade as well. So hopefully by the end of this video, uh, you see how A, it's very easy to upgrade. Now I've not done it yet. I've only watched videos of other people doing it. It's also gonna be my first time. So if I have like a sail through sort of seamless process, so shall you. And you're also going to see how nice it is, all the new features. We've got pinpoint placement, we've got grouping, ungrouping. We've got so many nice things that we could like to show you as well. So um, before we go ahead, definitely like, subscribe, join the channel because we are very, very regular with the videos. And uh, also know that if you're connecting with us digitally and you are a digital person, you're probably going to most likely like our All Friends Sewing Hub. That's our online sewing community. And that's where we put up a lot of our very serious sewing tutorials. And it's not just quilting, it's also sewing. So you've got fantastic teachers bringing out all kinds of patterns, taking people from beginner all the way to like advanced, whether you're a quilter, whether you're into sewing, uh, do it yourself. I think you're going to really like that community. So don't forget if you're actually on the YouTube channel You would really benefit from joining the all friends sewing up. So I'm going to leave links to all of this below and um, Hopefully we see you in more than just the one space So let's go ahead and start with this and then we'll see what to do next So this is Bronwyn's 770 and we're going to update her first before we upgrade her just so you all know whenever we are doing a update uh, date it's something you actually download off the bernina website and you plug it into your machine and you then just do a software update i'm going to bring it to the main screen so so you can see how i get there a software update is always something that's not charged it's whenever the company gives you sort of they improve any bugs in your software i think all, it's a very technological term uh, and they kind of release these updates quite, and I would say once in a year, just give it a check to see whether you're on the latest um, updated version of your software. 
But when it comes to the upgrade, which is actually the product that we're sort of displaying today, this is always the, the word upgrade. Any kind of machine product from Bernina, whenever they say, you know, embroidery software upgrade, you know that you're kind of going to pay for it, okay? So that's your paid product, and this is just your free update. So it's very important before we do the upgrade, uh, we make sure that this firmware, which is the software of the machine, is on the latest version. So this is how you check. You come to the settings button, and then you click the machine icon. And then you come to the info and you already see this V 1.0 button. So you click that and this is just going to give you information. I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer so you guys can see, right? And if you can see Bronwyn's machine, it ends with 1729. I just went to the website and I checked the latest version ends with 33. So I do know that we have to update her software. The second thing that the website also told me was if her flash memory the second number over here, if it's greater than 200,000, then it's going to be very difficult. There's not enough space in the machine to update it from 29 to 33. So you can just skip the step and go ahead and just put the upgrade in. So once again, it looks like this is not so important for everyone to do, but I just feel like for a smooth sailing process, let's try to make sure the software version is the latest and that you only do it, you can only do it when your flash memory in your machine is higher than 200,000 KB. I hope that's kind of clear. I'm sorry, it's very techy words, but hopefully this helps you learn something about your machine as you are um, uh, going through it. This is also really, really nice way for you to see, um, you know, how many stitches your machines have done and have you been sewing enough? You've been sewing a lot. <laughs> Look at that, 400,000 stitches, like four million, I have no idea. It's a lot of stitches. Anyway, so I'm going to now show you guys what to do next to update it before we upgrade it. So guys, you're going to get on Google and this is exactly how I do it because I need to get on the Bernina America website. So when you Google search Bernina, of course you'll find classic quilts, but go to the Bernina of America site because that's where it's the best place to get all your software firmware updates. Uh, and once you're here, you go to the machines tab and you identify where your machine is. So it's most likely a 770. At least I'm looking for 770. So that's under quilting. And we look for 770 QE. So just basically match the model that you are updating right now. Now over here, you're going to go to support. It's right there in the tabs, if you can see. And from here, you're going to go for support the that button <laughs> okay now over here you're going to see the latest version of the firmware now this number could change if you watch this video later on so just get the latest number and you can see by the the date that's under so the closest to the current date extract the files and once the files are extracted just copy the contents of the extraction and put it into your USB disk and make sure your USB disk is empty as in there's no other files in there and once you make the transfer like I'm going to show you now you are going to take the USB out and get back to the machine thank you so that's where it goes and a lot of this is just pushing buttons and then just waiting you know? i come back and i use the spanner that's the spanner icon i don't know and then there's a word that says update so i'm going to click that uh, before i update i first want to back up all the uh, files from the memory into the usb so that's the first button i click so it goes in order so first click this you gotta wait for it to do its thing it's done now you can um, update. Like this one is just kind of private information, so I'm not going to really get into it. But um, you can punch in the serial number. That's what I'm going to be doing right now. The number and the machine has been updated. So we just come down to the settings. We can just go back and check one more time. So machine, do the info, and then do this. 
and you can see that it's now a different number. It actually ends with one two, which was the latest version um, that I saw from the website. Um, and yeah, and now we're good to um, go ahead and upgrade her to the newest version. Let's do that next. All right, guys. So very quickly, we're going to show you what's inside the um, the upgrade kit. It's more than just the product code, which allows you to like unlock the upgrade on your machine. But it's also a couple of little goodies that I think has been very carefully planted in because most of the people who are going to be upgrading this are upgrading their 770 quilters edition. So what I really appreciate, apart from all this manual and whatever you're getting inside, is you also get the very, very new foot number 72S. So hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So this is the new... Um, quilting foot from Bernina. So 72S is different from 72 because you can switch between ruler work and free motion quilting without having to change the foot. It's because of that extra spring that's over there. Apparently it is a beautiful foot for anybody who loves to quilt on their machines. We also get these little, um, oh, it's all very well wedged in guys, hold on. <laughs> This is actually Bronwyn's Christmas gift, and I'm feeling so sad that I'm the one opening it up. But okay then. <laughs> uh, this is the couching insert. So actually, if you watch the video that we did on couching for the Joy Pillow, I'm assuming that you can use this as a similar application because you can couch and cord with this. So pretty cool. I think we're gonna definitely play with this and do a tutorial on this maybe for another project shortly. And finally, you get the product card. Now, this is the one that you've actually really paid for. And this is the one that when you open it up, I'm definitely going to ask Bronwyn to open this up because it's her gift. But this is going to have the code. And a lot of the code and the access and the unlocking is done on the computer. And once you finish it on the computer, you just bring it down to your machine and it's all good. I hope that makes sense. So let's do the next step, which is opening the key and then registering the key and the code with Bernina. And we'll take it from there. So you're basically now going back to the Bernina website and honestly, there is a link that you're going to get inside your manual. That's exactly what I'm tapping out right now because it took me much longer to try to find it on the website by clicking buttons. So I just thought it was easier to so enter the URL that is provided in your manual. And once you click that, you go straight to the landing page. So you see it's the upgrade activation page. Straight to the landing page where you get to see that there's a three-step procedure for the installation, update, register, upgrade. So we've already done the update. That's what we've done so far. So we don't have to do that again. But in case you haven't, it pushes you to always update first. So let's get started. And I'm going to skip step one because I've already updated because now I'm only interested in upgrading. All right. So... Scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> I'm taking my time with this because I'm like, what? I've already done this. I've got the 12 installed. So from here, I'm going to generate the activation key because the second part actually moves a lot faster. So to generate the activation key, Bernina is going to request you to enter in some information, so your personal data. He'll ask you to enter in um, your machine ID. You'll see that's going to come up next. So of course, I'm doing this for Bronwyn. So I'm going to write Bronwyn's name. And I think this is all a protection mechanism to make sure that, you know, people are not sharing the activation keys with each other. So per machine, it's one thing. So your machine ID as well. I feel like this is the boss trying to check in to make sure that everybody's upgrading themselves. <laughs> now this machine ID you can get from your machine and it also kind of tells you where to go from. Once you do that, the product key is the one that I showed you just before we started, the one that we have bought. So you enter all the alphabets over there and once you do that, you just have to click submit and it kind of just from that point activates your entire product. You get this activation key, which is what you're going to now take to the machine. All right, guys, so basically we've already registered now online and we've gotten an activation code. So you just have to come back over here to the settings. Okay, I'm going to use the stylus because it's right there. And then you come to the machine and the spanner icon. Now you're going to have, oopsie, not this one, the info icon. You're going to have this new button called upgrade. So you just click upgrade and you want to activate it.
and this is where you're going to enter the activation code or the activation key that you would have received it's going to be specific for specific like to your machine serial number it's all completely registered by Bernina because it's a bit confidential I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and I'm gonna click the green button then I'm gonna show you what happens next and it's enabled that's it I was expecting more confetti or something <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm going to quickly show you what the alphabets used to look like on the 770 before. So you still only have one, two, three, four of these straight characters. But now with the upgrade, uh, if you look at the alphabet folder, you've got the same four. But you've got a couple of more extra ones. And then there are these other language ones, which I believe are already there. But they've attached a couple of more of these alphabets for your normal sort of sewing. So you can access any of these. Um, a really nice feature that I believe that you can now do on this machine. Like right now on the machine, I have a 37D foot. So I can actually come over here. We could not do this before because I know Bronwyn and I tried it and it never worked. Uh, but you can actually now select the foot that's on the machine and it will display. So I'm looking for 37D, right? It will display on the side. And a good thing about having this registered is if I now select an alphabet foot, I hope you all know 37D is a quarter inch foot. So you cannot do anything but a straight stitch on this. If I select an alphabet, it's going to not allow me to sew that anymore. So I think this is a really nice safety precaution measure to just make sure that you're using the right stitch for the right foot without having to break needles or have anything that malfunctions and makes your sewing experience any worse. So this is all coming from the upgrade. You have more alphabets, like alphabet fonts, if I might say. And now you also have this ability to select your stitch foot number. Uh, Bronwyn is uh, the quilting legend. So I'm going to quickly swap over and give the mic to her to show you the BSR update. Um, I'm going to show you one more. I've actually put in a 1D. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to select 1D. Now you can totally see the alphabet because I've not gotten out of it. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys the triple stitch feature. So basically, if you pick any decorative pattern and you want it to kind of like really stand out, um, in the information button, you have the ability to turn it into a triple stitch. Not. So I have a piece of fabric. Uh, it's cotton, so I have double folded it. Otherwise, you could use a stabilizer. Decorative stitches do so much better when you have... Uh, stability. I'm going to quickly thread the machine. All right. So right now I have not activated the triple stitch. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two. I love your bracelet. <laughs> yeah, this was given to me by somebody in Bernina, like Bernina, Switzerland. When I'd gone for a retreat, I just made really good friends with someone. And I don't know, I just like wearing it whenever I'm working on a Bernina. <laughs> So here we go. I'm just gonna do one more and I'll do the pattern end. Oh, nice cut. So this is just for you to know what it looks like, you know, as a normal stitch. I'm not stabilized much, guys, so pardon. And look, I'm not even pulled the thread. <laughs> I'm being a little sloppy. Okay, now I'm gonna activate triple stitch. Now you can do this for all your decorative stitches. So if you look at the screen, oopsie. There we go. So you have to open up the info part and then you have to just click this and that's activating triple stitch. And this is a feature that would not be there in your un in your non-upgraded 770s or your 765. So um, if you just want to have bolder looking decorative stitches, I think very useful for if you're doing labels and stuff, you want to make the letters bolder. This is like a really nice way to do it. I'm just gonna do one more and then we'll stop. Thank you, machine. Love that everything is all automatic cut and so you can see the huge difference between the two of them. So that's normal mm, and that's so nice. yeah, it's so much bolder. It looks like a Looks like red work, doesn't it? It does. It has That's the thread beautiful. as well. So um, this is, again, complete software feature comes with your upgrade. Um, now, so can yeah. you quickly show what you did with that? Oh, okay. For those <laughs> of us that are blonde. <laughs> <laughs> She's referring to herself. So I'm going to just get the view here. So basically, 
I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna actually not even use the foot now. I'm just going to use the start stop button. So press and hold guys, yeah? Now, if you want the stitch, and that's reducing the speed. If you want to stop at the exact end of a pattern, that's the button you press. So the machine will say the end of the current pattern, it was right there. It stops right there at the end. Because many times when you're doing decorative stitches um, and you want to just say stop the foot pedal, you don't want to stop like in the middle of a petal or something. You want to finish the whole design. Um, I'll do it one more time just for you guys to get an idea. And the best thing about this is if you come to the info part of this machine, you can even pre-program it. You see this button? You click that. That's not the one, sorry. Uh, info. Let me, yeah, this is the one, right? So you can even say I want to do three of them and say okay so the machine's going to do three patterns it'll stop right at the end of three patterns let's just check that out uh in the upgrade they said that you can now increase this number to like 12 or something you couldn't do that many in a row yeah so now you can so let's just check this out so it'll do exactly three i love this guys i'm i have no foot pedal on now i've just like used the start stop button like nothing i'm winging it and it's taking time because it's a triple stitch, so I apologize. But there we go. You can see it's in the last one now. It actually did a countdown. And... Oh, it did not cut this time, but okay. There we go. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And I can also tell that the bobbin's almost over. <laughs> so we're gonna just change the bobbin and then we'll switch on to the quilting mode and it's gonna show us the kickstart mode so i'm just gonna hopefully get you a good capture on this so basically you're on bsr yeah we are on bsr mode two because you want the needle to stop at the bottom of the whenever we stop moving yeah <laughs> okay and the kickstart icon is just next to her right yeah. there can you click it okay so for kickstart you need to set your speed over here because you're not going to be using your pedal to control your speed. So you set the speed that you're comfortable quilting at. And I always suggest start in the middle and then move it up or down. But it just gives you a good uh, starting point then. Um, because this is what's going to control how fast you're going to be going. And now we're going to kick. When you press kick start. So we've kicked. We've clicked kick start. And now it's showing that to start you're going to push your heel down on the bottom of your pedal so when you'd normally sew your pedal sitting at this angle and you're going to push your toes down for your kick start to kick in you're going to push your heel down and you give it one push and then you can start see, and like you take your foot here. that's going to see Bronwyn's very nice footwear there <laughs> <laughs> so you put your foot on and you're going to push your heel down and now you're going to sew and now my foot is off my pedal and I can just relax into my free motion quilting. And that's what kickstart is all about. That's it. And now because I'm on so BSR2, when, yeah. when I slow down, the machine slows down. When I stop, the machine will stop. When I start again, the machine will start again. On BSR1, so let's exit that. On BSR1, the machine is going and let's kick start push down see the needle keeps going when you stop now that's good when you're doing tiny precision work because you want good points on them you see how beautiful those points are but it just <laughs> also means you can't stop for too long because you're going to create thread build up so now we're going to stop right because you don't want to create like little knots sitting in these points so what i'm showing you here is when the needle's constantly moving you'll get a sharp point and you won't get like a little skipped stitch but if you leave it too long you're going to get a little knot 
and you don't want that because it's going to be uncomfortable and scratchy in your quilt so you need to find a good balance and work with which bsr you like and now the new feature which i'm going to play with for the first time with this upgrade is a bsr3 and this allows you to do longer basting stitches so if you want to do some beautiful handwork or hand quilting or if you just want to baste a small piece of your project with free motion you can now use your basting stitch for that and again we're gonna use our kickstart uh, no kickstart heel down and now we go <laughs> and what this a contrast. is such a lovely feature look at this for anybody that does handwork to know that you can now do a beautiful baste. I would suggest you use your closed toe foot for this. Because you can see now this is catching a little bit. So with a closed toe foot, it's not going to catch. Here we've got, let me cut it. We've got, this is a stitch. It's a good half inch stitch. So if I was going to do some nice needle work and I wanted this basted, or if I'm going to hand quilt or some sashiko or something and you want to baste, what a beautiful option with your free motion quilting. I always say when you're basting a project, instead of basting in straight lines, you baste like a big stipple in a meander because then you don't have any stitches causing issues with the warp and the weft of your fabric. And then when you take them out, there's less distortion on your project. So this is beautiful. We haven't had that feature to use before. So Yay. I'm going to definitely play with that a bit. So Bronwyn has got the new SDT embroidery module and the best part of actually upgrading the machine is that it's compatible with the SDT. SDT is for faster embroidery and quieter embroidery. I think we like that. Plugged in the new. Are you excited for this module? I am. I've been <laughs> All right. a while. So Bronwyn has never done embroidery but I am very comfortable on embroidery specifically with the Bernina. Super super easy to do. So this is the new SDT one. I've already talked about it. Um, and one of the many things, because we've upgraded the machine that we can do now is we can access new fonts. So there are new, whoops, where's the stylus? So you can actually see that they've talked about having more fonts than they've had before. Again, I have to go back and check what the original fonts were, but let's forget about that. Let's actually just for now, you know, do like normal, um, I think our go-to name is Bob. So we're going to do Bob. <laughs> right come over here and then you can always select the hoop so i'm going to be working on a medium hoop so i'm going to just turn this from small to medium you can see that they have all the other hoops as well right you can put a jumbo hoop on a 770 but notice how you have that area grayed out that's because that extra bit the machine will choose to not embroider there because if it does, the hoop is going to hit this part of the machine. So you could, but I would just say that if you really want to go biggest on the 7 Series, just take the maxi hoop and you're good. This, now you can see that it's, this the bob is going to fit pretty well in the mid, mid, medium hoop. Um, it doesn't matter. I don't know why a lot of people fuss over this. If you're embroidering on cotton, it doesn't matter if you're using a straight stitch plate or 9mm plate. I'm going to actually leave the 9mm plate right there. And step number one, before I ever start embroidering, if you've seen all my tutorials on the Bernine, I'm going to ask Bronwyn to hold this now. <laughs> step number one is you want to calibrate the machine. So wake up the machine. You know when you wake this machine up, like switch on, switch off, switch on, it makes a noise here, right? Same thing for embroidery. So the first thing I do before I change the design is I click the needle button. And I'm going to let the machine, if you see what's going on with the module, it's just calibrating. All right. So, so it's now, calibrating to the medium hoop. It's calibrating to just be in sync with all sorts of changes that's happening on the machine. Okay. Because what I want to eventually do is I want to position, move, resize, and I want to be in sync with what's on the hip hoop. I don't want the hoop to just be stationary, not move, and not know where my designs are going. I hope that makes sense. As we do, it might make more sense. Now, if you look at part of calibration and waking up, um, it's you're going to just follow the screen, and it says to put the hoop in the mar module arm. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to press careful of the needle and then put it in and it locks okay 
Now you come back to the screen and you just have to click that OK icon. And it's, well, it's going to tell you to start embroidering, but you know I have not really positioned it. So I'm just going to go back to editing. But now it's calibrated, which means I'm going to come to the medium hoop. This little target sign, I want to bring him to the middle. And that's one way to do it. But you see how the hoop moved, right? So I'm going to remove this. Just, I mean, I'm just going to press that off. And you can see how it moves out again. That's because I've actually woken up the module. So now, oops, if I come to info and I use the move tool, which is the first tool ever, as I move this, the module is also moving, which is what I want because ideally when you're embroidering, you're going to have like a place that you want to put the design, right? So now I'm going to get the needle to match that point and it's going to move even on the screen. So what are you using to move it? Toggles. Oh. Or, <laughs> you being lazy. Ah, okay. <laughs> However, this is of course not accurate because it moves too fast. So I could, if I'm, if I'm, if I know that, okay, I want to bring this needle like right from here to here. Yeah. Quickest thing for me to do is to just for the first, because it's a big jump, I could just do a big jump this way. And now to be accurate, can you see? I hope you can see, yeah? You're going to move the toggles. Okay. And as you move the toggles, you're going to try to find, and I'm going to use my hand wheel to drop the needle down to see if it matches that point. Yeah, Makes sense? Perfect. Guys, this is a single point, all right? It's a single point and it's the middle of the design. Right now, what if I want Bob to be like here to here, right? And on the line. So I've got two points of references and I want Bob to stay on the line, right? So this is where pinpoint is really, really useful because it gives me more than a single reference point. Pin. Okay, so now I want to do pinpoint placement from one point of reference to two. So I'm going to hit that. Now, this was never there in the 7 Series, guys. That is, like, guaranteed. Um, and many times, when we, whenever I've sold a 770, um, this used to be one of the reasons, like, I would tell a customer, take a 770 instead of a 790 if they did not care much for embroidery. But if they did, I would tell them to buy a 790 because of pinpoint. But now, you can get a 770 plus it'll already have this or your 770 current can be upgraded to have the feature which is really cool so once i click this you're going to already see oopsie not that one that one that you've now got so many points of references so what i'm going to do is if you look at the the the, the patterns it's always you're going to choose depending on what you see I've picked the start of the pattern and the end of the pattern right there, and that's the line. So when you look at the screen, my two reference points will be this one and this one. So let's start with this one, yeah? Once I select it, it's, it's active, but it's not yellow. It's going to be yellow only after I click set, but I will not click set till I find that location. So I'm going to use the toggles to move till I find that position over there. That's pretty good. And once I do that, you can look at Bob. He's now become slightly tilted. Um, and that's because pinpoint placement doesn't only take into account position, but it even angles your design so that it goes straight. So for me, on this design, if I'm not straight on, on the line, and if Bob comes out like that, right? You're going to think it's very, like, unneat. It's not precise. So you're going to see now when I do the second point of reference, how it just stays in the straight line over here. So I'm going to click set. There's actually a whole YouTube tutorial I've already done on how to use pinpoint mm -hmm. placement. I will link that. So that's my second point. Now look where it's actually right now. It's, like, so far away from where I want it to be. So I'm going to push him back there. And pinpoint is going to reduce the size of the design and the angle of the design to squeeze in wherever I want it to. I'm almost there.
Okay, just a bit more this way. I think I'm okay now. So I'm gonna accept that. Okay, so now I'm gonna set the second point. So what's happened over here is I have fixed this whole design, right? With respect to where I want it to be. So the first point is there. And the second point is there. And I'm good for that. So now I can just go ahead and start embroidering. Okay. So of course you can adjust the speed. Uh, three minutes guys. So I'm just gonna see you right after this is done. So I just want it. So it's on Bunny Rabbit. Okay, so I'm gonna take it off Bunny Rabbit. Just so you guys get an idea on as to from a sound perspective, this is so not disruptive, it's so pleasant, it's so nice for the ears. And that's because of the module, all right? If you compare the sound made by this guy from a previous embroidery tutorial that I've done, where we've used the old module, you're gonna definitely see that this is a lot softer. So my recommendation is, if you've never got a module for your 7 series yet, get the STT one, because you're gonna love it. The last bit that I wanna show you guys on embroidery is, of course, apart from having new designs, is the ability to ungroup and regroup your designs. So I think that's pretty cool. So say I take this one that says, hug me. Right. I've picked up this motif, come to info, and then I select this button and then I do the minus. Now what happens is look over here, guys, yeah? It's now split all the layers, as you can see. So your design now has been ungrouped. And if you don't like something, like for example, you wanna change this word, you can actually like take that layer out. So that's how I do it. So you know, you press and slide to the left and then it's gone. And now I can always add another motif, like I want to add something, right? So what I can do is I can click the plus icon here and I can come here and I wanted to say kiss me, not hug me. So I can just come to any font over here and I'm going to do K I S S. Okay, so now I can reduce the size of this guy. And I can position him. If I can't view this, I can come down to the overall design, which will be at the bottom. And I can see that, okay, that's where I want this. That's the whole, that's, that's the whole design, guys. So I'm just gonna go up a few layers to find the kiss. And I'm just gonna position it over here. And then if I want to rotate it, I can rotate it over here as well. Yeah, it looks fine. So now I come all the way to the end. And the base design, and you can actually see that I have changed this design. I've ungrouped it, removed what I didn't want, and I put something that I wanted. And now it's a unique design. I can save this, use this, embroider this. And if I don't like it, I can further change it. Have you now changed the original of no. this design? The original is in the machine. Okay. Um, so if I want to save this design, I'll come to info and I'm going to go to... Oops, not this one, my bad. Um, yeah, so I come back to the folder and I add it to my heart. So it's saved there. But if I want to go back to the original, I come here and I open and it's still exactly where... So you don't make permanent changes to the designs on the machine just to keep your answer to answer it short. It's so there. you can't do that accidentally. You can't do it accidentally. Okay. So you're gonna this is your active drawing board. Whatever changes you make over here is to what's active and if you want it permanent, like you want to access it later, you just come and you save it in your folder and that's that. So if I want to open the the kiss me, I can open, come to my heart folder, and he's right there. Oh, that is brilliant. Yeah. Kiss me. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs>
Well, this is the main thing. I mean, this is exactly what I want to show you guys today. It has been a longer tutorial than what I wanted it to be. But I really hope you guys are able to see if you've got a 770, why you want to upgrade it. And uh, kind of a little bit on how Brinina embroidery kind of works when it's on the 100% machine embroidery side. It's pretty cool. Um, for any other questions, comments, things that you might have with respect to the upgrade, definitely drop me a comment below. Don't forget to, can you give me the other side of your hands? I can make a heart. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel <laughs> and so that you encourage us to keep posting more content as well. The more we know that, you know, video by video, we're able to reach to a larger audience, the more excited we are to do more. So kiss me.